Welcome to the Kingdom Cultural Center. We turn, I want you to turn to Hosea, Constitution, the book of Hosea. And uh, fourth, fourth chapter. And the sixth verse. Now, some of you already know where I'm going with this, so you I want you to just be there, meet me there, because I have arrived. I have arrived. Now, this is a time when God was charging, charged Israel against Israel. God's charge against Israel. Now, I want you to understand something. There's a lot of things we do, my wife and I, on last evening on the 23rd, we, uh, we had communion with the Father, her and I, and uh, we always have communion, just, just uh, the Lord, her, the Lord, myself, we, we have communion, and we enjoy those, 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 those precious moments. For those are the only things that, uh, this is one of the few things that he told us to do, uh, and this is the only thing he told us to do is, as often as you do this, you show forth the remembrance of him until he comes back. And that's, that's what God, that's what Jesus said. And that's what we do. And it's very important that we, you know, follow uh, our, 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 our king, follow our leader. You know, um, we walk, remember now, Jesus said, we walk by the spirit. And the Lord seeks those to do that not by sight, trusting in him. All right? Now, let us go to Hosea 4 and 6. And, 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 and it's a scripture that I mentioned. I even have it on the cards. I mentioned so much because on the other day, I, as I was uh, doing this past, uh, uh, they call it Easter season and resurrection season and Passover, I've been really doing some heavy searching into that. And um, the more I try to get with him, say, no, I can, the Lord, the Holy Spirit brings it back to me. And I want you to understand this one thing, that whether you know it or not, if you accept Christ, great. But stay in the words. If you study the word, you'll come up to know a lot of things that you may do or may not do, or things that you may have done through tradition, or whatever it may be. But listen to this. God spoke to the children of Israel, which applies to us, by the way. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. I want you to understand that. For the lack of knowledge. Okay? But listen to what else he says. Because you have rejected knowledge. Don't want to hear it. Don't ever get into that point in your life where you have dealt, and I, you know, I, I, so many things I've done, I, 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 I did, and I didn't know why, and I questioned certain things, but it seemed like the preacher back then had the month to say, make you feel like this, make you feel very little, but I found out that, you know, when you obey God, you're not going to get too many people that's going to follow you, and I constantly realized that. Remember when Jesus said, you know, broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be that follow it. But he says, narrow is the way that lead to eternal life, and few there be. So I realized, my wife told me the other day, we were sitting there, she says, honey, what we're doing is not popular. That's right. You stay in the word. It's not popular. But God is alive. He's alive and well. He resides. In me. And if you embrace the kingdom, he resides in you. You have the spirit of God in your life. Are you filled with his spirit? Ask yourself that question. Check yourself out. And he goes on to say, because you have reject now. And he says, I will reject you from being priests. In other words, I reject you from being a representative for me. Stay in the word. Stay in the word. Stay in the word. Embrace it. You're going to get many distractions in this world. 
You're going to get many distractions from your family, from those you, you, you embrace, to, and some of you from your wives, some of you from your husbands, from, from your children, from, from your grandchildren. Stay in the Word, because when you embrace God's Word, guess what? You're in good company. Did you know that Jesus was not a family man in terms of always letting his family, his, his brothers and sisters wanted to come in, and Jesus turned around and made this statement. He says, who is my mother? Who is my brother? Those who obey me, these are around me, obey me. They're my mothers and my brothers. Do you feel? Do you feel? It's the word that binds you together in the kingdom. It's the word of God. It's studying that word. It's walking upright that word. And listen, and I'm going to tell you something. If you're claiming, if you're applying a Christian to your name, Christianity to your name, and you're walking, and, and, and they haven't, they, they say it applies to whether you like Christ, then if that be the case, there's millions of you not like Christ. In the multitude, in the millions, you talk a good game, but you have a shabby life. Get a clue. I see it all the time from the pulpit to the door. Share it with love. And the first to say, well, it's your great God, grace, God, grace. Let me tell you something. Don't use that word grace as an escape goat. You know if you living right or not. And some of you already have a reprobate mind to do what you wanted. God just turned you over because you refuse to live that life, to accept his word. Envision yourself before the king in his courtroom, in his court. Envision them. And he, he tells you, you shall not do this. I want you to do that, but you can't do this. You do this, but you can't do that. If the king is telling you, what is there to debate about? His word is law. His word is law. Thou should not steal. Then, okay, oh, you're fine, you know. Here's your principles coming. You see a man drop his wallet. And you saw him dropping, he walked in going to the store, and you pick it up. God had blessed me. No, he didn't. Where's your principles? Where's your character? Follow the man. Give him back his wallet. You saw him drop it. Some of your characters and your honesty is just deplorable. Don't claim to be a follower of Christ. Be filled with the Spirit. Focus on give the king quality time. Talk to him. You know, when you live by his word, and this is going to get some of you now, when you live by his word and walk by his word and obey his word, prayer is, a, is the least of your problem because you're living his word. The Holy Spirit is emanating through your life. The glory of God is coming out through you, affecting other individuals. That's what the glory is. It means heavy, heavy. His presence is there. You can feel it. When you get the glory of God in your life and you focus on God's word and the Holy Spirit is emanating through you, when you walk in these demonic spirits, even in the church, especially in the church, these guys with homosexuality, love it, they want to get away from you. People who have the bad spirit, they want to get away from you quick. I've seen it too many times, my wife and I. When you live a holy life, when you live a separate life unto him, your life will shine. It will emanate through your personality when you speak, when you don't speak. The praise and glory will always go up. People will seek you out. When you have the Holy Spirit in your life and you conduct yourself as a kingdom citizen, it will emanate through your life. That's all I have to say for you until next time.